Before we begin, let's take a moment to review the division algorithm, which this book calls Euclid's division lemma. Theorem. For any integers j and k with k greater than 0, there exist unique integers q and r such that j equals q times k plus r, and 0 is less than or equal to r is less than k. The idea of divisibility follows very naturally from this theorem. The intuitive idea of divisibility is that it arises when there's no remainder. If we set r equals 0, we get j equals k times q, and we might say k divides evenly into j. In formal mathematics, we just shorten that language to say k divides j. The book gives a definition in terms of fractions, but we will use the more common definition that avoids them. Definition. For integers a and b with b not equal to 0, we say that b divides a if there exists an integer k such that a equals b times k. This notation is simply read b divides a. If b does not divide a, we put a slash through with a vertical bar. The book uses a horizontal slash, which is increasingly less common, but you should still be able to understand it from context. There are a number of easy examples to consider to help think about this definition. 6 divides 24 because 6 times 4 is 24. 6 does not divide 33 because there is no integer k such that 6 times k equals 33. 1 divides a for any integer a because 1 times a equals a. And negative 1 divides a because negative 1 times negative a equals a. To help become more familiar with the definition, we will do a quick example proof. Example. Suppose d divides a and d divides b. Then for any integers x and y, we have d divides ax plus by. The proof is simply a matter of applying the definition and doing a little bit of algebra. Since d divides both a and b, they are just integers j and k such that a equals d times j and b equals d times k. If we then substitute these into ax plus by, we find that we can write it as d times an integer. If d divides both a and b, we call d a common divisor of a and b. And this naturally leads us to consider another definition. Definition. If a and b are non-zero integers, then a positive integer d is called the greatest common divisor of a and b if it satisfies the following. d is a common divisor of a and b, and if f is a common divisor of a and b, then f is also a divisor of d. The second condition is what shifts d from being a common divisor to being the greatest common divisor. It basically says that if f is a common divisor of a and b, then it must be smaller than d. The reason we use the property of divisibility is because it's more useful to use in proofs. There are a number of different notations that are used for the greatest common divisor of two integers. We will use the first of these. The book uses the second. The last one is worth paying attention to because it has a lot of practical generalizations and is commonly used elsewhere in mathematics. At the same time, it's easy to confuse that for a point on the plane. Since we won't be seeing the generalizations of that notation, there's no benefit for us to use it here. In the next video, we will look at a method for computing the greatest common divisor of two integers known as the Euclidean algorithm. It will turn out that the Euclidean algorithm gives us even more useful information than just the GCD. Thank you for watching this video. I'm currently dabbling with the idea of creating more videos like these for my classes, and I welcome constructive comments that might help me make better videos in the future.